But uh, you'd have to say it is uh, Mohamed Amin Kalem, who will be favourite for this one here. Had a fine performance defeating the Chinese player in his first match. So he has one win to his name. Whereas Moreira, who lost to Zhao in his first match by three games to one, has work to do. In terms of uh, how the countback would work if uh, all the players were tied on uh, matches in terms of the points that they've won, it would go back on games and then on to points. So every point could count. But it's a must-win matchup for Moreira if he is to make it through to the knockout phases. As for uh, Kalim, well, he could actually afford to lose this one. But as long as he lost it by three games to two, then it would get nice and complicated and I'd have to work out some maths as to see who would go through into the knockout phases. And there is uh, Mohamed Amin Kalem from Italy, 34 years of age. He is ranked ninth in the world. That's his highest ever ranking. Achieved that in September this year. And you can hear from the noise in the crowd. Diego Moreira. And they will be invaluable to him, no doubt. Paraguayan umpire Andres La Rosa will look after this one. So this one is a Class 9 matchup in the men's singles. Just to uh, underline what Class 9 means, it means mild impairments of the leg or legs or mild impairments of playing arm or severe impairments of non-playing arm or mild cerebral palsy with hemoparalysis or monoplegia. In terms of Italy's record, in the para table tennis competition throughout the years well they've won five golds in the past four of them coming in the men's 33 medals in total they ranked 17th on the para table tennis medal list so they have got quite a proud history in this competition Kalem did say that one of his ambitions is to try a medal hit he's an outside bet for that and after a really good performance against Zhao in his first match late yesterday, he'll be no doubt feeling quite confident if he can kick on and possibly top Group D, which would mean an easier round and an easier uh, matchup in the knockout phases for him. So the both players will have a short warm up before the match will begin. Just to remind you, it's uh, a best of five games each game up to 11 points you have to win by two clear points players alternate hitting two serves each if it gets to 10 points a piece though they then alternate hitting one serve each I'm able to hear who won the toss well Diego Moreira is uh, ranked 30th in the world that is actually his career high and, uh, he's struggled a little in 2016 one one match at the Slovenian Open, lost, losing three of those, and won two at the Slovakia Open, losing four. But did have a good 2015, won the, uh, the gold medal at the Copa Chile, and also won bronze at the Copa Costa Rica tournaments. And there's a former gold medalist in the team event at the Parapan American Games back in 2015 on Toronto. Won bronze there in the singles as well in Class 9. So has had some success on the big stage before. But it will be Kalem, who will be the strong favourite for this one, who's had a good 2016, picked up a, a gold medal at the Lignano Master Open earlier this year, and also had a good 2015, where he won a couple of bronzes, both at the Belgium Open and at the Czech Open. First ever Paralympic Games for both of these players. So there's always likely to be nerves in the system, particularly with so much riding on this match. Coach, they're watching closely. You just never know when you get the crowd behind you, get the adrenaline going. You can often see some upsets. Certainly, Brazilian players have uh, raised their game so far in this year's competition. Oh, 
as I say, Kellen, who won his first matchup against Zhao by three games to two, sitting in a good position to at least uh, make it through to Group D. And uh, as far as my maths are concerned, if he was to pick up two games, I think he would be very close to making it through to the knockout phases. But he'll want to get the three and top Group D as time is called. So it is Diego Moreira against Mohamed Amin Kelem. And it'll be the Brazilian Moreira to get us underway. Important that the Brazilian, you feel, gets a good start, gets the crowd involved in this match. It's a big forehand as well. Too hot to handle for Kelem. A good positive start from the 29-year-old. You've got to like the body language being showed by the world number 30. Lots of positivity. Looks like he believes early on. There's a long, long way left to go. And Kelem, an experienced para table tennis player. Tony had started playing the sport in 1994 at the age of 12. Again, rasping forehand from Moreira. He's just pushed that backhand long. Incidentally, Kilem says that his best achievement was winning gold at the Lignano Master Open this year. So he had plenty of confidence coming in to this match. And this tournament in Brazil. But he's up against it in this first game. Herrera playing some excellent table tennis. That's the first time we've seen a, a fine forehand from Kalem. Read the serve. Haven't seen any real emotion yet from the Italian. Excellent defence from the Brazilian. He's a firmly struck return, but he was able to deal with it, Moreira. Oh, he had the chance, but a bit of backspin on the ball from Kalem. Just maybe meaning that Moreira wasn't quite able to sort of read the backspin. Kalem pushes another backhand long and encouragement from the crowd for the Brazilian. And that's that he has to win in order to make it through to the knockout phases. So far, so good for Moreira with a four point cushion in the first game. <laughs> Hasn't found his range at all, has he? Kalem and maybe feeling a few nerves. Pressure is on him. He didn't have as much pressure on him in the, the first match against the Chinese player Lat Yao Yixing. Oh, he's in the zone right now with Moreira. Spectacular table tennis. Really has got the forehand working well. Switching it up, going on the diagonal and then going up the line. Six game points become five. Oh, 
Well, that's delightful. And that rather sums up what has been a wondrous first game for Diego Moreira. The world number 30 takes the first game off the world number nine. And wins it convincingly too by 11 points to five. As I say, it could well get very complicated as to who goes through in this group if Moreira was to win this match. What a start he's made by taking the first game by 11 points to five points. Could well come into it as well. Remember, if uh, each player has one match win, it goes back onto their games ratio and then onto their points ratio if the games ratio are tied as well. First time, really, that Marrera's missed with that forehand. It's another monstrous forehand. He really winds up big. He's not stopped moving, has he, either? Since coming out, Diego Marrera. Adrenaline, no doubt, running through his veins. He's using it in the right way. It's a better type of attack, though, from Kalem. It's not often that he's been able to get on the front foot in the rallies. Difficulty though for Marrera, he's got to keep his level as high as it was in that first game. Can he keep it up? Kalem reacting. Thought we might see a reaction from the world number nine. So he didn't panic too much. I think he will have been well aware that his opponent was just peaking in that first game and he maybe just had to ride the wave. Again, Kalem able to defend the big forehand. He almost put everything behind that first strike, did Marrera, and then seemed to run out of gas. And Kalem got it back in play. from Kalem. Lots of positivity now from the Italian, as they say, he was very uh, quiet in that first game. You see the coach for Brazil, they're leaping up out of his chair. Very quick to move around the backhand, Moreira whips that forehand up the line. That's great defence from Kaleb. Again, dealing with the diagonal forehand from Moreira. Look how far off the table he is. 
Herrera just trying to almost get a little bit too much top spin on that one. Misjudged the flight. Two-point game then. Looked like Kalem was going to ease away in this game, but Marrera showing some fight. Go! Go! It's a terrific rally. And again, it's the Italian who comes out on top of it. It's just beginning to turn the screw on Marrera in terms of winning the exchanges now. In that first game, the rallies weren't lasting as long, and Marrera was able to apply the pressure and Kalem couldn't deal with it but Herrera just not going away still a two-point game well, the backspin did for Marrera that clever play from Kalem Just not happy with a few of the words being spoken by the Brazilian coach. Managed to quieten down. He hasn't ever got away from his opponent, Kilem. Moreira lingering. Gap's not really got any larger than three points in this game. Clever play from Herrera. For once, not winding up and going big on the forehand, just nudging it around, using the backspin. And it's a timeout that is called. It's a one-point game in this second game. And, well, for those that thought Kalem would win this one easily, it's not proved that way at all, is it? He's in a real battle out here. That's the situation then, so far. Marrera taking the first game 11-5, but it's Kalem who leads the second by nine points to eight, but he's been in front pretty much throughout this second game. He made a slow start in his first match, did Kilem against Xiao. Dropped the first two games, 11-8. He was able to recover and won the, the last three to defeat the Chinese player. Again, making a slow start here. But I'll be hoping that he can claim this second game and mean that he doesn't have a mountain to climb once more. But it is in the balance. One-point game. It's a fine rally, and it's Kalem who wins it. Crunching forehand up the line. And it is two game points to level things up in this match for Kalem. Big hitting though, once more for Herrera. Whenever he can get a return that's a little short, he is going to wind up on the forehand. Just the one game point left then for Kalem. And he's missed the forehand. It's 10 all. And listen to the noise in the Rio Centro Pavilion 3.
Getting right behind there, Matt. It's been such an effort so far. If he can just squeak this second game, then he is very much alive and kicking in Group D. And Kalem has missed the serve. Maybe the pressure getting to the Italian. And it's now Marrera with a game point. He's trailed pretty much throughout the entirety of this second game. But it's the 29-year-old with an opportunity to go two games to love up in this Group D encounter. Oh, he was so close. Off the top of the net, it could have gone anywhere and ends up just missing the table. He was always going to throw everything behind those forehands. He knows how close he was. Kalem still alive in this game. So just catching the net, so it will be a, another serve for Kalem. Did enough. Just feel the return was a, a little short for Moreira. And Clem able to get a lot of topspin on the ball with the forehand. He's had some success with that shot. Holding his nerve that time, so it's a, a third game point for the Italian. Oh, what a rally, but it was relentless from Kalem. And in a game that really could have gone either way, had to save a game point, did the Italian. But we are level at one game each. Again, a superb effort from the world number 30. But this time comes up a little short in the second game. It is Kalem who takes the second game by 13 points to 11. Well, it'll be fascinating now to see how Marrera reacts after losing such a close second game. Fighting for his life in Group D. Really, he has to win both games from here if he is to try and get out of this group. It's a very tight group. But he has certainly performed above his world ranking in this group, no doubt about that. In fact, he took a game off the world number five in Zhao in his first match. Very nearly going two games to love up against the world number nine in his second. Very much validating his inclusion at these games, Moreira, with the way he's playing. Young player, two at 29. He's got a bright future in the game. And he's done a lot of damage with the forehand, that time the backhand working. Pulled it wide, and he was right on top of the net. I just thought that 
Momentum might shift the Italians' way after sneaking that second game. Not so, so far. That's big hitting. Just couldn't get it away from the big forehand of Killem. On that occasion, Marrera. Oh! And the forehand is beginning to be more and more dominant for the world number nine. All about that first strike, it seems. You can dictate the point. Tends to stay on top of the point. Yeah! Well to do with the slice backhand diagonal from Marrera. Kilem with a bit of momentum here. Down the timeout being called by the Brazilian. It's quite often used just to stem momentum as well as to discuss tactics and to switch things up. Incidentally, if Kalem was to win this game, it would be enough to see him through. Into the knockout stages. Marrera has to win these last two games. And he's got a bit of a mountain to climb. Clever serve from Kalem. Bit of side spin on the ball, deceiving the Brazilian. I just couldn't resist. Maybe the bit of backspin on the ball, meaning that Marrera couldn't control this forehand as much as he wanted to. Missed it by a long distance. Does tend to wind up and really use his feet into the shot. And again, some exceptional spin, and side spin and backspin on the ball for Kalem. And this game has been a different story so far for the Italian. Five game points. Comfortable game then for the world number nine. It's been a battle up until the third game, but he's in control now. And I think, as far as my maths are concerned, that game means that he will go through to the knockout stages. He's getting the uh, Brazilian crowd going and probably getting them going against him. But it is Kalem who takes the third game by 11 points to five.
So what we do know is that this will be uh, Diego Moreira's last match at the Paralympic Games. There's no way he can get through the group, even if he was to win the last two games here. But what he can affect is where Kelem finishes in the group. If he was to win the next two games, Kelem would finish second behind Zhao. Whereas if Kelem is able to secure one of these two games, and it'll be the Italian who tops Group D and will therefore have an easier draw in the knockout stages. It's been a really good effort, though, for Marrera so far. Can he keep it going and can he keep himself alive and at least take home a victory from the Paralympic Games? It would be some achievement against the world number nine. To say, when you look at the world rankings, the 21 ranking places that separate these two, the golfing class hasn't looked that big. And that is credit to Marrera. But it is Kalem who is just showing his experience and his quality at this level now. He's beginning to ease away from Herrera. And that's a super backhand up the line. Clearly catching Kalem by surprise. Leaping into the forehand, Marrera, but Kalem just getting the ball back in play, using the backspin, making it tougher for Marrera to really attack the ball. It's amazing, though, how often matches can come down to one turning point. You just feel, had Marrera taken that game point in the second game, the situation right now since saving that game point the uh, Italian has gone from strength to strength <laughs> Marrera showing a lot of character fighting back in this game Fabulous. Really working the table from side to side. And one way, then the other. a lot from his experience even though he is going out of these Rio Paralympic Games Marrera he certainly will feel that he should be playing a higher level of table tennis more often the way that he's challenged these top players apologizing for the net court there but found the table and it's five all and again the Brazilian crowd getting behind their man A monster of a return from Kalem. Read the serve and was onto it in a flash. It's a two-point game. Edging ever closer to that finishing line, Kalem. Remember, it's important for him to win this match, so then he would top the group. Look 
can only cling on for so long in that rally. Kilem. Of course, any win for the Italian would mean he tops Group D with two wins to his name. That's big hitting. He's got a lot of success out of the inside out forehand. Again, the crowd really trying to inspire Moreira. That's a good little serve. Just crept over the net, plenty of backspin on it. Just pushing it long. It was so close, trying to control the big forehand from Kalem with the backhand. And it just floated out. And Kalem is two points away from topping Group D. Still, though, the forehand is firing from Herrera. The crowd still believe. Does the 29-year-old. Crowd noise is frustrating, Kilem. And he's something he's got to deal with. It was always going to be like this against the Brazilian. And the Rio games. Not only have you got to beat your opponent, you've got to beat the crowd too. And that service error has just allowed Moreira back into this fourth game. So who's going to have... Well, is it going to be a game point or is it going to be a match point? Nine all. Hey. It will be a game point. What a turnaround in this fourth game. Looked like Kalem was just easing away to victory. Not so. Back comes Moreira. Remember, he had a game point in the second game. Wasn't able to take it. Can he take his game point here in the fourth game? Oh, he's just missed it. It's a similar situation on the game point in the second game where his ball hit the top of the net, carried wide that time. Again, striking the top of the net, but coming back on the Brazilian side. So 10 points apiece. And that backhand drifts long, and Moreira will have another game point. And there it is. Well, it's been a performance full of spirit and character from Diego Moreira. Going against the grain, the fact he's ranked at 30th in the world, it's been incredible, really. The problems he's been able to cause his Italian opponent. Is he going to be able to claim his first ever win at a Paralympic Games? Remember, he's out of the competition anyway because he cannot get a better ratio than either Xiao or Kalem. But what a performance from the 29-year-old. He takes the fourth game by 12 points to 10, and we are going into a decider.
And some firm words being spoken to Kalem by the Italian coach. And remember, this game means more to the Italian because if he's to lose it, he would end up with a ratio, a game ratio of five and five. It would mean that Marrero would end up with a game ratio of four and five. And Zhao would top the group with a game ratio of five and four. That's five wins, four losses. So uh, Marrero, I'm afraid, would go out on the game ratio. And we know that anyway, even if he was to win this game. Due to the fact that he lost to Zhao by three games to one. But that's not going to stop him desperately trying to claim his first ever win in the Paralympic Games in front of a boisterous Rio crowd. Of course, Kalem wants to top the group as well. I mean, for an easier passage. So, if Kalem wins this game, that is what would happen. He would top the group because he would have won uh, more matches than Zhao in both of his matches. It's been a group full of drama, though, hasn't it? Just has to try and keep his emotions in check here. You feel doesn't want to feel like he's fighting against both his opponent and the crowd. So right now, Marrero is playing some inspired table tennis. It is incredible what the crowd support can do to a player. The level of table tennis that he has displayed from start to finish in this match has been well above someone who's ranked 30th in the world. Just flicked the top of the net and landed in the table. Marrero with a two-point cushion. It's been a Group D matchup full of drama. Now we're going to have a few more twists and turns. Kalem now looking a little dejected. No doubt frustrated that he was in such a strong position in that fourth game. He was up by three points at one stage. Wasn't able to get over the line though, and it's now Marrera in the ascendancy. And again, the forehand doing the damage. And now it's a three point cushion for Marrera. Again, dropping it a little short, allowing Marrera to wind up on that forehand wing. It's purring again, isn't it, that shot for the Brazilian? Knows it's slightly dangerous to go to the forehand side, Kalem, but also knows if he's able to put enough backspin on it, Marrera can't resist going big.
Just wonder whether there's going to be another twist or a turn. Of course there will be. It's been that sort of a match. Kilem reducing the deficit to just the one point. Got to give Marrero so much credit just to be in this situation. Remember, he had a game point in game two. Wasn't able to take it. Kalem won that one. And then Kalem winning the third game, 11-5, was up by three points in the fourth game. It looked like, for all the world, that the Brazilian were done and dusted. But what a fight back by the world number 30. Kalem showing some character himself to fight back from three points down in this game. But he still trails as Marrero edges in front once more. Well, did well to get the first forehand back. Marrero again. And he has one way of hitting that forehand, it seems, and that's heavy topspin going for the winner. Eight points apiece. It's long. And Brazil are two points away from claiming what would be a super victory. It wouldn't be enough, remember, to take Moreira through to the knockout phases, but what a win it would be for himself and for Brazilian table tennis. And he's now just the one point away. It's been an incredible performance. And Moreira has two match points. Oh, we just couldn't make it. It was an extraordinary rally. A couple of net cords in there. Kalem clings on. Remember, if he's able to win this match, if he's able to turn this fifth set, fifth game around, he would top the group. But he is facing a second match point right now. Oh, would you believe it? What a win for Diego Moreira. Delighting the Brazilian fans. Quite simply, a sublime performance by the world number 30. He's defeated the world number nine. It means that he still comes up a little short of getting out of the group, which is so harsh on him but he can be so so proud of his efforts it's his first ever win at a paralympic games and he's done it in rio fully justifying his qualification into the men's singles class nine and he can take so so much from these games kalem squeaks through into the knockout phases by the skin of his teeth but he doesn't top group d that goes to Zhao on the game's ratio. In terms of match points, they all finish on three. And then on the count back on game's ratio, it's Xiao with five to four.